Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, <laughs> mind the mic. I haven't been on in, like, uh, two weeks because my mic broke, and I finally figured out I could use my Tritons on my computer. So, till then, I'm going to look kind of like a douchebag. I just want to talk about this game last night against the Detroit Lions. Um, I wish I could have talked shit with uh, that Caleb guy because he loves talking shit about Jay Cutler. I wish I could have talked some shit, but whatever. Um, uh, next time, I guess. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, good, good job. Good, great game for the Lions. That was a good game. Uh, at least, at least for the Lions. Um, first half we had a chance. Second half, uh, the Lions love to play football in the second half. I guess. Uh, Javid Best, 88-yard touchdown run. He had like another 80-yard run. 163 yards on the night. Just amazing against uh, a team that's supposed to be able to stop the run. Uh, the Lions don't run the fucking football. They suck at running the football. And Oh, God damn, man. And that uh, the Bears offensive line, uh, once again, you face a good uh, defensive line, a deep defensive line, and uh, we get butt-fucked. That's pretty much what happened. So, uh, and, um, That loss of Gabe Karimi really, I think, hurt more than people think because Gabe Karimi was actually one of the more consistent players. Even through the first two games, he was playing really well. And I really hope we get him back soon to have a chance right now. Um, I don't think the Bears... I don't think we're going to have a chance this year. Uh, the Lions, you know, can, I give props to the Lions. I don't think they're as good as people are saying they are. You played, who have you played? The Vikings, 1-4. and four. No quarterback. Their defense is not playing well. Uh, the Cowboys. Cowboys are choking. Tony Romo, up and down. Cowboys. You beat the Cowboys. Uh, the Chiefs. The Chiefs are not what they were last year. And who'd you beat... I don't know who the f else you fucking beats, and the Bears, uh, the Bears right now. So I'm the ba the Lions are doing what the Bears usually do, and they kick they find the teams at the right moments to win. Uh, they kick the team when they're down. So I'm not saying I'm not nothing bad against the Lions because the Bears did the ex exact same way last year. We played uh, so many teams like like the Cowboys and like the Dolphins where they were injured and hurt and and we kicked them when they were down. That's how we got a lot of our wins last year. We weren't as we weren't as good as uh as people might think as we were last year. Our defense was, but um the the team as a whole wasn't. Uh this year right now, injuries are killing us. Chris Harris last night, you could definitely tell he, he has mobility issues with that hamstring. He was atrocious last night, atrocious. And he was one person I thought they missed the most at safety. And he got burned, and he got beat in the run game. He, It was hard to watch. The defensive line couldn't get any pressure. They have no depth at defensive line. And the most glaring hole, uh, the offensive line. Karimi, like I said, is gone. They need to get him back. Omiel was getting ben like destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. And then finally gets benched in like the fourth quarter, I think it was, when the game's pretty much out of hand. Lance Lewis moved over to right tackle. Edwin Williams comes in, does a serviceable job. But <laughs> Jamarcus Webb. Dude, I mean, I I think he's a good young talent, but god damn, why are we starting this guy? Why didn't we go out and sign a veteran offensive lineman? The Jerry Angelo has had plenty of time to build this offensive line. Uh, I'm going to go back to the 2006 season. 2006, the Bears were actually a good team. Rex Grossman was a great quarterback. I don't care what anyone's going to say about Cutler or Grossman. First of all, I want to I want to address Cutler because I know uh, Caleb addressed Cutler. Um, Cutler was not did not take himself out of the game. Cutler was taken out by the doctors. Now, if you're going to look at the the game day reports from Fox and everything, they're going to say he took himself out of the game. Three days later, the doctors came out or someone came out said that the doctors took him out. So I don't want to. Don't give. Don't talk about his quitting. That he quit or his toughness. This guy gets destroyed every single play, and he still comes out and he tries to keep his team in it. Last night he played a great football game on his back, fucking 95% of the time. So I, I'm really proud of Cutler. If you give Cutler uh, the Packers offensive line, the Patriots offensive line, even the Lions offensive line, you're talking about this guy top five, top seven quarterbacks. You're talking about him with Ben Roethlisberger and all these type of guys uh, in the same fucking discussion. So if once we get an offensive line and Cutler is still here, uh, I, I'd be afraid if I was NFC North teams. And, and our defense doesn't get older, so... <clears throat> I want to go back to 2006 really quick. 2006, we had Reuben Brown, Fred Miller, John Tate, Olin Krutz, 
and Roberto Garza. Olin Cruz was at that time was one of the best centers in the league. Top two centers, top one center in the league. Fred Miller was a, a solid veteran, and uh, John Tate was a great left tackle. And Reuben Brown was was a legend at left guard. So they they had a great offensive line that year. And Rex Grossman, he was in discussions for MVP. He was in discussions for MVP if it wasn't for that second half of the season. And I blame everything, almost everything. I, obviously, he made mistakes. But on Pep Hamilton, their quarterback coach that year, just, you know, Rex Grossman is kind of like Tim Tebow. He needed help with his release. And Pep Hamilton did nothing about that. Grossman is a six foot tall quarterback. He has a very side armed release. If you're going to be a six foot tall quarterback, you better have a release like Drew, Ble- Drew Brees, a high release. He didn't. His balls would always get tipped. He can't can't get the ball up high. And that's that was really his downfall. Uh, but like I said, they had a great offensive line. Jerry Angelo knew that that this offensive line was old. They're old. The three guys, Miller, uh, Reuben Brown, and John Tate, within the next year, they all retire. So we're down three offensive linemen. Who do they draft? Josh Beekman, fourth round. Who? Who? Josh Beekman. Yeah, he's not on the team anymore. He didn't draft anybody young to, to build into that spot. The youngest guy he drafted was Chris Williams, an injury-prone piece of shit offensive lineman who can't block, whose work ethic is questionable, and, I mean, go get Jeff Otaw if you're going to get uh, someone in the first round. Sam Baker, left tackle right now for the Falcons, is a is a really good left tackle. Uh, he was taken in the second round. We could have got him, so I, I don't understand that. Go out, I just, Jerry Angelo needs to go. They need to, in this draft coming up, they need to get younger at the defensive or at the defensive line. Yeah, they need to get more depth at defensive line first, or second, of course. Uh, they need to get deeper at the defensive line. They really got tired last last night. First of all, they need to get deeper at the offensive line. They need to get older, more experienced. They need to go out. And this is all my opinion, guys. Uh, in free agency, they need to get veterans. Uh, Brian Waters. Brian fucking Waters was in the free agency for uh, like a month, and they they didn't get him. The Patriots got him. He's fucking a beast for the Patriots right now. Get a fucking a veteran guard, a veteran tackle, somebody, and ha- draft young players to sit behind these guys and learn how to play the position. Learn to play the position so when these guys leave, you got experienced guys coming in. That's how all the great teams have, have with good offensive lines, that's how they've done it. You build up your young guys and you put them in. That's, how, that's what you do. Even I know that. I'm a fucking, I'm not even in football. So... They need, I, like, Jerry Angelo, like, what the fuck? That's what you need to do. So, <laughs> Jerry Angelo needs to go after this season. They need to get a general manager who knows what the fuck to do. Not who doesn't trade away Greg Olson. Like, come on. So, I'm just really pissed. I'm glad I'm a Blackhawks fan. I am so glad that, uh, that I am a Chicago Blackhawks fan because they are fucking good. Um, but, yeah, Detroit Lions, two of you guys beat someone good. I'm not that impressed. I mean, you guys are doing what you're supposed to do. You're, you're beating down on shitty teams. But next year, if you guys continue this, and next year when you guys play a really good good team, um, you guys are going to sh- suck, just like the Bears. Every time the Bears they play a shitty season, they get a weak schedule, and they do good. Next season, since they did good, they get a, a stronger schedule, they play like shit. And it just keeps going like that. That's what I think the Lions are going to do. Until they get better. Until we get better, we're going to be doing the same thing. So, <laughs> unless we get better, I don't know. So, uh, thanks a lot, guys. I know it's a long-ass video. I'm trying to rant right now because it's been a while since I've uh, made a video. So, I'm trying to pack everything in right now. So, uh, subscribe up top, comment down below, and uh, let me know what you guys think about my video. So, uh, thanks a lot, guys.